Let's see here. All right. So, um, I think you chose these scriptures also. Yeah. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9, it's about having the power. Mm -hmm. About having the power. That's what I get out of this. Mm -hmm. Who also made us to be equalified and sufficient as ministers of the new covenant mm -hmm. as a divisory contract. Not of the letter mm -hmm. from an epistle or book, but the spirit that is divine, mm -hmm. which you just kind of got talking about. Mm -hmm. For the letter of an epistle or book kills mm -hmm. by putting you to death. Mm -hmm. But the spirit, uh, where was I now? But the spirit that is divine gives life by revitalizing. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? Keep going? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll sum it up at the end. Verse 7. But if the ministry of an official service of death written and engraved on stones for, for stumbling, mm -hmm. so they were written on purpose on stone so it would become a stumbling block for people. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, that's where we are today. People are saying the commandments are done away. You don't need to keep them. Why would you keep that old stuff? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the stumbling still is here today, mm -hmm. which is a sign that the law has not passed, as we talked earlier. Yeah. It has not finished its finishing point. Mm-hmm. Because it's still making people stumble today, which is why we're having this discussion. Mm -hmm. um, of death, written and engraved on stones for stumbling was, now listen to this. He says, was it's glorious, glorious. Mm -hmm. with honor and, and praise. praise. Now, how mm -hmm. can something be with honor and praise be a curse? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. So that the children of Israel, and this gets interesting, the children of Israel could not possibly have the power to look steadily, steadfastly with intensity mm -hmm. at the face of Moses mm -hmm. because of the glory with honor and praise of his countenance, yes. which glory was passing away mm -hmm. and rendered entirely idle and useless. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to stop right there the, on the word for stumbling, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, I was I was stumbling, and so I couldn't look on something that would show me I was stumbling. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't look on it, and so I couldn't see the glory or the benefits of it, and so I wouldn't look at it. Today, they can't see the glory of this thing written in our hearts, so they can't look on or perceive or receive what's coming out of us, this glory, mm -hmm. and so they're no different than those who saw it physically written and engraved on stones. Now it done moved from a stone into your heart. From glory to glory, it's moved. Same law hmm? written on your heart. Same law written by the finger of Yahweh. Right. Written by his fingers on your heart now. He prophesies in, in Jeremiah. I'm going to write them in mm -hmm. your hearts and in your mind. What do you think he's going to write? He wouldn't write it. He wasn't speaking to the Gentile. He was speaking to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. He was going to write these laws. What house are you going to be a part of in order to receive the law? We're actually told that actually in the book of Revelation. And if you go look at the series, I don't mm -hmm. remember what chapter and verse it's in, but he says I, it would be in two or three, uh, chapter two or three, I think. He says, I will give you a white stone mm -hmm. and a new name written on it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do a study on that, what you find, it goes all the way back to the time of Joshua when they entered into the promised land. Yes. They had to take stones and they had to whitewash them and clean them with lye. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. They clean them with lye to make them white and they wrote the commandments on them mm -hmm. that these commandments will be in the land. Mm -hmm. So this same white stone, when you get into the kingdom, is going to be a stone, a memorial of his commandments written on that stone plus the new name that he gives you. Mm -hmm. Now, how can you get that stone if you're a com willful commandment breaker? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to the other thing here about the stumbling. Mm -hmm. I remember, I'm going to make a simple one again mm -hmm. so that people can understand. Mm -hmm. When I was a young man, I used to study Japanese karate. Mm -hmm. Okay? And... Uh, the particular one I was studying was not the most popular. Back in them days with Bruce Lee, it was Kung Fu and, you know, some of those other things. But we all wanted to mimic Bruce Lee. 
because mm-hmm. he was graceful and all the crazy stuff that he was doing. And, and that was our idol for that, you know? Mm-hmm. So when I went to the school and started studying, I like, I wanted to do all these cool moves and stuff. Oh no, that's not what you're going to get to do. And I was like, well, that was a stumbling stone for me because mm-hmm. that's why I came here. You're not going to teach me this. He goes, this school is called Goju-ru, which Goju means the way of the heart and the soft. Mm-hmm. So what they what they said was for the first year and a half to two years, you learn the way of the hard. Mm-hmm. Punches, simple kicks, and it got boring after a few months. Mm-hmm. But after a few months, staying with it, you start to develop one technique on the other and you started to perfect it and you started to feel a flow to it. Mm-hmm. There's still just a hard way to do, but the soft part didn't come into the picture until you started getting up close to the brown belt. Mm-hmm. Okay. When I started getting into that level, then the soft part started kicking in and it became like a graceful dance. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, wow. Now, had I not stuck with, and this is where Israel failed, mm-hmm. they didn't stick with the hard part of the law. So they stuck. So it never led them to Yahshua mm-hmm. where they could get the soft part. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> this is the way of the hard and the soft. Yes, yes. It starts off hard because your life gets turned upside down. Mm-hmm. The devil comes and he wrecks everything because mm-hmm. he don't want you to have this covenant. Mm-hmm. And he turns your whole life upside down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you can weather that storm mm-hmm. and believe that Yahshua is there mm-hmm. to carry you through one step at a time, eventually it gets softer. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. I'll put it like that. <laughs> All right. Verse 8. Uh-huh. How will the ministry of an official service of the Spirit mm-hmm. that is divine not be more glorious with honor and praise? Mm-hmm. So what he's saying is that old system mm-hmm. had honor and praise mm-hmm. and glory. Mm-hmm. It was a passing away glory. That's why the glory on Moses' face didn't last a long time. Mm-hmm. But even at that, they couldn't look at they it. They couldn't look on it. Mm-hmm. So how much more is the glory of this one that we're in right mm-hmm. now? Mm-hmm. And, and they, that, that, that was a glory of law. Uh-huh. And so is this one. Yes. And they still can't look on this glory. They still can't look on this glory. Mm -mm. And I believe we're going to come to a scripture that kind of defines that a bit, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So verse 9, For if the ministry of an official service of condemnation Mm -hmm. that judges against for sentencing Mm -hmm. had glory, Mm -hmm. and it did, Mm -hmm. because he said so, Mm -hmm. with honor and praise, the ministry of an official service of righteousness with equity, in other words, it's worth something, Mm -hmm. of character and justification exceeds much more to superabound in excess Mm -hmm. and abundance in glory Mm -hmm. with honor and praise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because this one lets you go. This one forgives you. But the first one was designed to lead you to mercy. Because after all, before it. you even opened the ark, the mercy seat was there, you know. And you but, had the sacrifices but, that held off uh-huh. the penalties. Yep. And but man decided. This is where that letter mm-hmm. crunches in and, right. and get you on. Man decided to write it in the letter that he, you just if you guilty, you dead. Whatever they did, whatever you did, you got stoned right away. Uh, uh, man taking over now. He's not going to receive instruction. Right. You know, even though Moses prayed for uh, Yahweh mercy on Israel numerous of times in that wilderness. Mm-hmm. Numerous of times. And he didn't destroy them. That's mercy. But That's that grace. Mercy and they try to say extended. there's no grace in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. There's no grace in the law. Not so. And so Yeshua's justification comes in even above that to let you see the glory that was in it but they couldn't see it and they can't see it now the glory of your forgiveness today rested in those laws and you disobeying those laws 
And if you still disobey him today, why you can't see the glory at him laying his life down for you, his blood being shed for you that you don't continue. But now let's try to walk in the law of love. Let's try it. Let's try that. Let's try it. We can't do it on our own strength. We need to allow him into us to give us the strength to walk it and not condemn ourselves as, as we did with the letter. He's not taking this away. It's just coming from glory to glory, from one glorious stage to the next glorious stage. But you're supposed to be able to see it even more now. So it's more glorious now in this dispensation. We seeing it because it was written for our learning. To learn not to do what they did. To learn not to walk the ways that they walked. And to get on the, uh, uh, how would you say, the rebellious character that they put on in those days we're not supposed to be rebellious today as we are with no law we're rebelling right so what makes us different than them oh because mm -hmm. you on the grace no not so is the law sin he say yahweh forbid it's not it's there it's still there in all its glory but if you really see Yeshua, then you should see the glory that has been bestowed upon you. Forgiveness, mercy, long-suffering, love and kindness, all of that's within the law. He is that. You know, we're told that this gospel of the kingdom must go out to all nations, mm -hmm. and then the end will come. Yes. Few people really understand what the gospel message is of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Gospel, as a lot of people know, it means uh, good news. Yes. What is the good news? That a kingdom is coming? Yeah, but how do you define that kingdom? All kingdoms have law. Yes. All kingdoms have law. Mm -hmm. And what is the good news? The good news is that this particular kingdom has a sacrificial lamb in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach mm -hmm. that was slain from the foundation of the world who has covered everybody's sins, who willfully gives themselves over to his spirit to be led by the spirit. And the spirit can't contradict itself. It can't tell you that you need to be obedient here and then be disobedient to a righteous law over there. Yes. Okay? So this kingdom is a kingdom of Torah law. And we're yes. told in Zechariah that the law will go forth to the four corners of the earth from mm -hmm. Jerusalem mm -hmm. and all you Gentiles better get in line and you better start being obedient to that law because he says, if you don't come up to my feast, mm -hmm. I'm going to put a famine on you and no rain on you and I'm going to crush you mm -hmm. for your rebellion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to crush question. you for your rebellion. So this kingdom, the good news mm -hmm. is that this kingdom is a kingdom of law Mm -hmm. But it's a law that you can only keep if the living spirit of Yahweh Elohim is abiding in you. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can live. Mm -hmm. And if you make a mistake, there's an atonement for you that can be washed away. A true, authentic at atonement. Not this cheap one that you see out there with this false gospel out there that you can worship whatever you want. Mm-hmm. So we need to redefine what this gospel message is yes. because it's been highly perverted. 